Hey guys, we're trying something a little bit different here today. We've got the uh, shelter in place drawing stream that we're going to be doing here for the remainder of our time in quarantine, if you will. So I hope you um, will enjoy this. Hope you might be able to join us um, several times throughout this month. And what we're going to be doing is this um, drawing I'm going to draw tonight. I may not do this every time, but I'm going to draw Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday uh, from 5 o'clock. I'm going to start at 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll probably go till 6 o'clock. So tonight, I just want to do a demonstration of uh, drawing these eyes. And I think it should be, might be a lot of fun to try that. And if you're joining, um, let me see if I can get... Get all of my cameras working here. Let me see. Looks like my main camera isn't wanting to play. Hold on one second. Let's see if we can figure this out. Try that one more time. Oh, hey, Somia. Let's see if this will cooperate with us. All right. Breaking my toys already. Look at this. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... I'm not seeing my main camera. I'm not sure why that's happening. So I think what I'll do is we will we'll close the live stream and and then we will open it back up uh, for some reason. It's not working. Okay, hold on one second. All right, so we're going to shut it down. We're going to try it again. All right, so there we go. So if you're just joining, we had to shut the live stream down and then turn it back on again. So sometimes, I don't know why, that's uh, just the remedy from time to time. Technology, uh, what are you going to do? All right. If you're just joining, welcome to the Shelter in Place CP Drawing Stream. And what I want to do tonight, and I may not do this every time, but at least tonight what I want to do is I'm going to draw these eyes. So I think that'll be a lot of fun, drawing just the eyes, and we're going to only use the Durawent Lightfast 24 set as well. So I've got a, a small sketch here. <laughs> hey, Sergio, man, thanks for joining over there on YouTube Live. Glad you're here. All right. Let's see if we can take a look at this. So when I'm looking at something that is a limited palette like this, um, I have to, you know, decide what I'm going to do. You know, what I'm not I'm not going to have every color, right? So I have to make some decisions. So this is the 24 set and I think you can see every pencil. It starts right here with a white and make sure that yeah, that is the white. Then it goes all the way down to uh, the other end here, and we've got some kind of yellow. Hey, Melanie, thanks for joining over on Facebook. Long time no see, Melanie. <laughs> we just spoke with each other. Okay, so sun yellow is my yellow over here. All right, so I've got a uh, sal salmon color. Um, I thought I had a sienna somewhere. I was wanting to say sienna when I grabbed that. No, guess not. Okay. Got champagne. Anyway, I had a black in here, so actually we're just going to use 23. 
Uh, I don't think I'll use black. Um, so we've got everything um, within the 24 set except for the black. I took the black out. I usually do that. The black probably lasts me a long, 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 long time. So I've got a good substitute here. I've got chocolate, if you can see that. Maybe I'll put it over here. Um, but chocolate, ch chocolate's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ramon is asking, didn't we just do this this morning over on Facebook? All right, so I'm going to sharpen this one up. Brown and yellow ochre. Let's see here. What do we have? So we've got blue violet. So we got some blues in there. Um, we got violet. So what is this one? This one is sandstone. And we got that champagne. It's the one we were just talking about, right, Sergio Man? Um, We've got Venetian Red, which I do like that one. All right, so I know I'm going to use chocolate. I know I'll probably use wheat. Eh, well, I'll leave it for a little bit. I will use Ruby Earth, more than likely. Sandstone, I'm going to grab these and sharpen them. Yellow Ochre. Uh, let's see. Salmon, obviously. And I don't have a good pink. I'm going to have to use scarlet. Um, and then heather. That'll be a good one. So, yeah, we're going to use a limited palette. We're going to limit ourselves to only these 24. Um, it's still something that can be done. Natural brown. All right. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, Sergi man, we do have brown. We got brown and yellow ochre. Um, I don't know that I'm going to be using yellow ochre right off the bat. So let me sharpen a couple of these that I know I'll be using. Uh, yeah, you know what? I thought of that um, kind of late, Ramona. She's asking about getting the source and work with me. It's an excellent idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that uh, earlier when I was editing on the on the photo. Um, yeah, I I love that idea. I need to, I guess, set up a page and just um, make the source available over there. So, all right. Yeah, thanks for that reminder. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to get that done for you guys. Get some of these sharpened. All right. Yeah, I guess I'll stick them right there. Asian red and Heather. <clears throat> I'm still not ready. I don't want to. Hey, Oksana, thanks for joining over on YouTube Live. So if you're just now joining, I'll say this one more time, that uh, we're going to be doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for those that may not know. And we're going to be doing this at starting at 5 o'clock, is what we'll do. Hey, Peggy. 
Awesome. Oh, very cool. Well, thanks, Peggy. Appreciate that. So Peggy is over on Facebook and in North Central Canada. Very, very cool. Okay, wow, that took a lot out of that red pencil. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ramona. So Ramona said this makes these times more doable. Um, I'm guessing we're talking about these live streams. Yeah, for me it does. It helps. I, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to start with, yeah, I'm just ignoring Alan, so we'll, we'll just go, go ahead here. <laughs> I'm sure he noticed that. Um, that's funny. Ramona, Ramona spotted that out, didn't she? Okay, I'm going to use Ruby Earth to just get an outline down here. A little bit. Got a little bit of an outline already so that we can not waste a lot of time and we'll just get started right away. Um, but I want to look around at some of the darker areas and increase that road map a little bit. There we go. Maybe I'll zoom in here just a little bit. Might help. All right. So I just want to get the the outline on here. And then we can uh Start adding a little more color. Yeah, the highly used ones, Oksana is asking about that over on YouTube Live. Um, that's a good question. The favorites are uh, the ones, yeah, that uh, are highly used, and they're down to nothing. They're down to nubs, usually. And... Um, uh, some of those are the um, Oyster is uh, one of the lightest ones. Mars Violet is uh, one of the good neutral kind of tones. And uh, Chocolate is another good dark one. Um, these are going to be some fun eyes to draw. Merlot is another great one. Um, I'll tell you, a good, a good substitute for any of your pencils in the Derwent Lightfast line is to grab the Derwent Drawing Set. Um, they're also Lightfast. So... Well, hey, Peggy is out here. Thanks for joining, Peggy. So, Peggy's over on Facebook Live. Yeah, good question, Sergi Man. <clears throat> so, Sergi Man is asking an important question. He's asking what paper we're on. So this is UART paper. And I believe it's the 600 grit. It's the one I had around. Uh, I usually work on the 800. 600, give you, it'll give you a little more tooth. Um, this one isn't bad, though, either. Okay. I get my head in the frame, somebody tell me. Sometimes that happens. I notice that when I'm editing videos. I was doing that just today, 
editing some videos and notice my bald head getting in the frame. Okay. Suggest this. Where that is. Okay, now. Right in here. We'll start that shadow shape somewhere in there. Okay. There we go. That should be enough to get us started. Make that a little bit bigger. And then that eyebrow comes up. I mean the eyelid and eyelashes come up just a little bit higher, it looks like. And this goes down just a little bit more right in there. There we go. <laughs> your quarantine haircut. Sergi, man, that's hilarious. Worse when your your uh, quarantine haircut gets all over the drawing. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Let's see here. So the border, I made this mark, and I think it's pretty accurate. It's somewhere over there. Maybe I should do this. Let you see what I'm working from. Might help. See if I can do this. Get it in the frame here somehow. Zoom back out. So I've got this larger um, reference over here. And, and then I have the smaller one right there that is isolating just the eyes. So... This thing isn't wanting to cooperate. Uh, let me see if I can make it do what I want here. <clears throat> so this guy's name is Evan. He's nice enough to let me draw him. All right. Now that it's all folded up and uh, and uh, got a bunch of wrinkles in it, maybe we can use it. How about that? Does that help? Yeah, just to isolate it just a little bit. <laughs> um, so Oksana is asking I was laughing at what Sergio Man just said about uh, this reference looking like a stubborn man um, or maybe you're talking about the the uh, inability to get him straightened out here but uh, Oksana is asking if I prefer to work on printed references um, as opposed to digital or do I use digital also I'm, most of the time I'm using uh, physical references. Um, once in a while, I've got this little holder that I will use from time to time, and it uh, it's a holder for my iPad, and I will use that sometimes, but I, I don't know. I just I got in this habit of just using um, a physical reference, and it, it seems to work fine. Um, I have kind of liked that whenever I can zoom in and look at details a little bit more on an iPad, but... I don't know. It um, hasn't really bothered me, I guess, just working from printed references. I can see the value, though, in using a digital uh, image instead. Or even also, you know, using the, the digital image while you're using um, the physical printout. Okay, so... Usually what I do, let me look at this palette again. You know, he's got brown eyes, kind of a lighter brown. And we could go ahead and just do that. I like to start with shadows, typically. But I'll go ahead and get a suggestion of some of the color in the eyes. Now this is sort of the, um, the brighter highlights in the eyes. This is 
a very light, light color this sandstone is. Yeah. The cool thing about this is if you're using the 24 set of light fast pencils, you can use these exact colors if you want. You don't have to. You can use polychromos. You can use light fast. Um, list could go on and on. Um, you could use the Faber Castell gold Faber pencils. I mean, you could. There's a whole bunch of pencils you could use. Okay, now let's do this. Yeah, it's, um, Sergi Man, to your point there, if you're using a digital reference, then I, I feel like that I run the risk of just having, um, having something that is so pliable, and I, I keep, you know, yeah, you're welcome, Oksana. Um, if I'm using just digital, though, I'm just, I'm constantly fiddling around with it, with the digital image, um, is my problem. I'm not saying others do that, but that's what I do. I just sit there and I want to play with it and zoom it in, zoom it out, and instead of just finding something that, you know, kind of works and then leaving it at that. I'm looking for some of the darker darker shapes. I don't really want to do these eyelashes yet. I just want to put a little bit of something there just to remind myself that's where those are. And over there as well. And this is going to be quite a bit darker over here, though, because this is the shadow side. And, and then I've got shadows over here. Obviously, in the eyebrows, um, it's also in shadow, but it's a very dark eyebrow. So that's something I can grab and establish right away over there. This is darker right in here. Now this comes up pretty high. Eyelashes, whenever light is hitting eyelashes, sometimes, depending on the zoom level and how much detail we're actually going to get. Let me zoom in just a little bit at the beginning here. We can zoom out later if we need to. But um, but sometimes with eyelashes, you can have some lighter colors uh, where light is actually being reflected from the light source hitting against the uh, the hairs of the eyelashes. Okay, work on that edge over there. It's really pretty dark. I want to make sure that I've got enough of that outer rim. There's this little edge that we often have on eyes. On, uh, right there on the edge of the iris that's darker. <clears throat> this eye appears to me, the one on the left appears to me to be opened up uh, even more than the one on the right. I uh, could be wrong about that, but that's what it looks like. Okay. So, it's probably enough with that dark pencil. I'm going to look at that, that space over there and how far down that sideburn is. Not that we're going to really draw all of that, but I want to get it in there just to give myself some uh, context. OK, 
Okay. All right. So I'm going to put... Maybe I could do... <laughs> okay, Sergi man, I'm uh, I'm just gonna let your comment just kind of lay there, I guess. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna go ahead and. I guess this is salmon, probably. Yeah. I'm going to use this salmon color and just get a base tone in here in a few places. And I'm using pretty light hand over here. This is the same kind of concept uh, when you're using paper and not sanded paper. When you're using like cotton paper, like Stonehenge or a good watercolor paper or something like that. You can do the same techniques. Some of the method will change from time to time. Like instead of using this overhand grip, most of the time on a cotton paper, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use tight linear strokes. And I'm going to go like this and just keep those strokes very consistent and very tight. But the concept is the same. I'm going to rely more on multiple light layers on a cotton paper, on sanded paper. I don't have to do that. I don't have to rely on that as much. So just an added uh, benefit for uh, using a non-absorbent surface like uh, sandpaper. Okay, here we go. So I'm trying to be pretty light-handed with this. So I don't want to fully saturate all of this tooth. There's not a whole lot of tooth on a 6 or 800 grit. There's certainly more tooth on a 6 or 800 grit sanded paper than there is on most cotton papers. But you can fill it up. And depending on you know what your outcome, desired outcome is, then you want to be aware of how much you're putting in there. Okay, now, I think I'll, well, I'll use that sandstone. Let me see here. Look at that brown ochre. Test it over here, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's just, um, it's too much yellow. Uh, for what I want to do here. Okay. I want to look at Venetian red and ruby earth right beside each other. So ruby earth has more of a red hue to it and I think I'll use that just a little bit more here uh, I want to start on this dark side and work in some of these dark areas and I want to look at and think about where the the different planes of all of these uh, features are. Yeah, Mars Violet uh, would be a good one, Sergi Man. Um, but I'm going to try to stick to a limited palette. You're right, though. That would be a good one. Okay, so we've got more out that way. Um, I can add a little bit of that in here. I could go ahead and establish my my white over on this side. Um, 
I'm going to use this mist. It's a gray color for the highlight in the eye. And over here, I'll do the same thing. Um, so I'm going to use the white. That's another thing I would not do on Stonehenge paper. I would not be using dull pencils at all. I can get away with that, though, on sanded paper. I want a little bit of this white over here on this side because it is pretty bright over there. So right next to, while I'm there, I might as well spend a little bit of time, but right next to the uh, reflection in the eye, um, I want it to be as dark as possible. I want the biggest contrast right in there. And if I do that, um, then the other thing I can do is, so I'm showing that that light is passing through that, uh, that um, uh, convexed area of, of the cornea and, and the eye itself, the uh, iris, eyeball itself, and it's then casting a shadow over on the other side. And so that's something I can get away with doing, is making it very, very dark over there on that side. Uh, let's see. What's that brown ochre? I'm thinking I'm going to have to mix the brown ochre and chocolate together to give me a good, maybe... Maybe the red also to give me a good brown in the eye. There we go. Mist. Sergi Man's asking about grays. Um, there's just mist in there. So that's all I've got for gray. Uh, and so that's okay. That's all right. It's kind of a, a lighter gray, but that's okay. Okay, let's do this. So that's a little bit lighter. And uh, I'm going to add this red right in there. And then I need something a little more rich. Um, I don't have an orange. Let's see. Okay, let's use that yellow ochre. I'm sharpening it up just a little bit. All right. Now... Use that yellow ochre. It's a little better. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. All right. Maybe go back to the sandstone just a little bit. Get sort of this rich brown color. And it can be a little bit brighter. You know, this, this stands in for my orange color, the sandstone does. It can be a little bit brighter down here on the bottom. And on top, it's going to be a little bit darker. Because there's going to naturally be a little bit of a shadow on top. There we go. Okay, use that sandstone to sort of blend that just a little bit, and grab that white. I need to sharpen it. Let's 
Okay. Yeah, a little bit more. There we go. And and we can push that dark color inside there just a little bit. Getting some crumbs. I want to blow those away. There we go. Okay. I uh, might have enough right there for a while. I think that's okay for right now. Okay, now, on this side, everything's going to be so much darker. So, I can go ahead and use that chocolate everywhere. I need this pupil to be just a little bit bigger. I don't want that to be too tiny. Okay. So let's get all of this just a little bit darker. Add a little bit of the sandstone here and there. And that's probably okay for right now. Zoom in here, see what the... Sometimes it uh, helps me just to see it on the screen. We'll see what it looks like. Okay. Then I'm looking back and forth at, you know, that reference up above and this reference. So I've got a lot of um, that lighter brown over there. And the more that we darken everything over here. Uh, hey, Ted, thanks for joining. The more we darken everything over here on the shadow side, then we're going to be able to um, see that highlight with that gray that I put in there. But I do that primarily to protect it, protect that area. Um, and it will show a little bit more later on. So I'm going to use this heather uh, color right here. And, and then I'll come in here with some other colors, though, to tone that down. Because we don't want purple eyes. But for right now, that is what we want. Okay. And it does need to be darker on this side. And I know that tear ducts are always going to have um, a little more red and pink than other areas. Even though I'm not going to see this too much, I'm still going to put a little bit of red right in there. Okay. Never hurts putting a little red up here, down here. I'm going to put some red right in here, even though we won't see it later on. This is where it can start to just look like a fun house a little bit and weird, but that's all right. And as long as we we know what what we're headed uh, towards, where we're going, and what we're trying to accomplish, and another wrinkle. I'm making a bigger deal of these wrinkles right now than I need to. And that's okay. And do a little bit of that over here. There we go. And then get a little bit of the eyes along with cheeks, ears, different areas within that middle third area of the face can always have a little more warmth, a little more red in them than what we initially think. What is this color? Oh, natural brown. Ah, 
figures, I would find that and think about that after I'm done with the eyes. Um, <laughs> that might have been helpful. Okay, so maybe we'll use that in the eyebrows or something. Um, work on these just a little bit just to get more of a, a road map and not have just an outline here. Okay. There we go. So we're not going to finish this uh, tonight. So what I will do is, um, if you're on my email list, I will email you. I'll, I'll make that available. I'll, I'll email you the copy somehow um, when I send that email out tonight. And then we're also going to work on this again tomorrow. Um, but maybe you'll be able to catch up tonight if you have time before 5 o'clock tomorrow. We're not done yet. I just wanted to let you know that while I'm thinking about it. Okay, let's do this. Limited palette. We got to figure out what's going to work here. So. I'll use this uh, blue-violet for the sclera, for the white of the eye. And that'll give us a darker area to work from, because I, I want to uh, push it in this dark direction for a little while, and then we'll go back in a lighter direction after that. So... This whole area right in here is quite a bit darker. And then it comes out of that and gets gets brighter. I'm talking about the Scalera. But while I'm here, I might as well use a little bit of that on the eyelashes. Okay. Oh, thanks, Ted, over on... Uh, Ted is my uh, brother-in-law. Um, he's over on Facebook. So let me put a little bit of that over here. Make sure I get some of that in here. There we go. It's like a family reunion out here tonight. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It must be, uh, must be all the shelter-in-place going on. <laughs> Okay. I want to darken up this ring just a little bit. Especially from the top. Have it a little bit darker uh, down here on the bottom as well. Okay. Now, I'm going to use that. Oh, is already using it. Okay. You can get this. Darker area right down here. Now when I go over this with lighter color, then I can spread that out. It'll spread out a little bit more. But I want to keep the white over here on the Scalera a little bit brighter, at least for now. I may go a little bit um, darker later on. But at least for now, I want to keep it a little bit uh, brighter. Nearly white, actually. Okay, that goes up like this. And it turns around. And maybe in here. Okay. All right. We've got enough red, I think. 
So, get rid of some, some of this debris and we'll set that pencil back down. And now, I think what I want to do is put more of that heather color in here. And maybe we'll be able to spread some of this out when we do that. So I still want to think about how um, the planes of this area of the head uh, function and how they work with light. So I don't want to lose track of that. Yeah, But I do want to get some darker tones in here. Darker down there. There we go. Hey, David. David Thompson. David Thompson's over there on Facebook. I hope you're doing all right. Good to see you over here, David. So David is a, a teacher, and um, I'm guessing he's probably doing a lot of things online nowadays. All right. At least currently. I'm talking about he teaches school. So, public school. Go in this direction. Adding just a little bit of tone in here. Something we can work with, right? And let's see. That's going to be brighter up there. Uh, we've got that that line right in here. There we go. Awesome. Well, thanks, Anna, for joining over here on uh, Facebook Live. Very cool. Yeah, we're trying to use the 24 set of um, Derwent, a limited uh, palette, so that's exciting. Uh, I like that, being able to force, force yourself to use what's available. Okay. So this is all about the eyes, but I just have to kind of suggest where the nose might be there, just to get some context with what we're doing here. All right. So let me just fill a little bit more of that in where we see some darker areas, and then we'll switch over to a lighter tone. And remember, we have to we have to decide on uh, what we're going to use in the palette when we're forcing ourselves uh, to use a limited palette. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Linda. Linda's over there on YouTube Live. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Mm, yeah, thank you, Oksana. Yeah. I uh, I do like that, that Heather color. I'm going to grab that little highlight right there, and it wraps around, you know, the eye. Right there is what we call the band around the eye. Um, it is there. It's not always noticeable in every portrait. But, you know, it's there. Sharpen that pencil up again. It doesn't want to sharpen on me. There we go, a little better. Get that highlight right in here. Don't want to lose this. There's a little tiny bit of that skin that I'm, I should be able to see, right there in between uh, the upper crease and this lower area. Okay, let's get all this in here.
don't know if you can hear that. That's that sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Sometimes I just have to switch up the stroke so I don't hear that. <laughs> you hear that once in a while on a, a sanded surface. So okay, so on this side, you know, th this this works okay over here. I hope you can see that with. Maybe I should move this light a little bit. I don't know, that might be too bright. Go uh, right there, that might be better. But um, this needs to be darker over here on this side. No, so uh, Susanna over on YouTube Live is asking if I was burnishing. No, but nearly. I'm getting close on... Um, certain portions of it, but no, it it wasn't uh, it wasn't burnishing. Um, there's still some room over there. A little bit of lighter area right there. So for those that may not know, uh, burnishing is just when you're pressing really hard to the point of uh, flattening out the tooth. If you're on like a cotton paper. If you're on a sanded surface or a non-absorbent surface, um, then you also can burnish. You reach that point where critical mass, where you've got so much on the surface that you can't get any more. Okay, I'm going to fill this in right here. I want to suggest a little bit about where where this nostril might be. This does go up just a little bit more, right in there. And Hey, Carol is joining over on Facebook Live. Live, how are you, Carol? Good to see you over here. Okay, let me push this down a little bit. Okay. By way of reminder, we are using a limited palette. We're using the Derwent uh, 24 set. And... We're just going to work with those pencils only on this particular demonstration and just try to force ourselves to make decisions based on what's available in that, in that set. Okay, now let's do this. Let's go back. I want to add a little bit of this red up in here not too much just want to add a little tiny bit where uh, this form edge is going away from the light so it's very very warm right there in that area and and then I want to graze the surface over here. And I've got to get a darker tone overall over here. Now, and one thing I don't want to lose is this area uh, is reflecting a little bit of ambient light. Uh, right over here on the lower lid and so I want to show that and then there's lighter area over here where the cheek um, is going to be shown a little bit right here with that area up above the zygomatic process um, but that darker area wraps all the way around so it comes all the way back over here underneath the eye that little bag under the eye right in here 
Yeah, thanks, Oksana. Um, she says, I'm getting creative with the colors over there on YouTube Live. Yeah, it... Um, you, uh, you have to, right? If you've got a limited palette. <laughs> Not much choice, right? So, Okay, let's do this. Let's get... A little bit of that mist in the uh, Scalera. There we go. Is this working with people like yourself or with Linda Brewer? Uh, so Linda Brewer is asking over on YouTube... Uh, live if this is taken, if the reference is taken with a cell phone or a camera, and it's taken with a camera. Um, I took it with my DSLR and uh, 50 millimeter lens and um, so, and then I did some photo editing on it uh, to prepare it. Uh, I shot it in RAW and then did some editing on it, and um, and yeah, and so I, I actually it was very very dark in the shadow, and so I had to lighten that up quite a bit. Uh, it's very easy to do though if you shoot in raw. Uh, it's not very difficult to uh, to change uh, a photo. I'm going to use blue in the Scalera. Just not getting enough uh, variation, not getting dark enough. And it's not getting that uh, that cool tone in there that, that we want. So a little more blue right in there. And what I've done to one, I need to do to the other, right? Treat all your kids the same. Don't favor one over the other, right? So I've got to do the same thing over here to this eye. And this eye is going to be darker, though. But for right now, that's. I want to add a little bit of that in there. Okay. Now, let's see. Got to work on that skin just a little bit more. Work on some of those shadows to get to get those I'll put that in there there we go okay and push this back up in here again get that shadow that I kind of lost a little bit and I think this goes up just a little bit higher that might have been too high and that's okay we can look at that yeah it's a little bit too high I'll take that off a little bit. There we go. Got too many pencils in my hand. Set those down. And I do want to grab this guy and push this up here. There we go. So as this moves over, I don't want to lose that wrinkle right there. And then as that um, wrinkle right there above the eye moves away, it uh, also creates a transition. Um, what can I use? Let's see here. It creates a transition from... I think I'm going to use red, and then we'll work on it later. But it creates that transition from uh, a dark value to a light value. So I'm going to start in the, d the dark value and then move away from that value and lighten up the pressure as, as I do. And it's not quite the right color, and that's okay for right now. I can add the right color a little later, but it's the right 
uh, tone. It's the right value. There we go. Okay, same way over here. Uh, this does need to be very, very warm over there. Okay. Now, um, if I'm using red, though, on this side, the side that is reflecting more light, I can see more, there's more clarity over here, uh, then when I go to the other side, I need a muted, darker red. So that Venetian red is not a bad way to go. Everything's going to be darker over there anyway. All right, so I had a thought. Well, oh, um, just to make that look a little more realistic for the moment, I can put a little tiny bit of white right in there, a little glint of reflection. I can lighten that up right there. Uh, that'll add a little something. And right in here, I can add a little bit of white. Right in there. There we go. And let's see. Come back in here with my heather color. So it's just a, a layering of that back and forth. And then on the other side, I can use uh, what do we have? We had some kind of, we have blue violet. I can use that and make that even darker over here. There's a certain area right here in the Scalera that you'll notice from time to time that is very dark uh, when it's inside a shadow because it's it's uh, describing that contour. And so that's what we want to to show as well. Okay, now it's got those eyelashes over here. This goes out just a little bit more. Those are right in there, I believe. There we go. Push this down just a little bit. Okay. I need to switch colors. Sometimes, um, Sometimes it's hard to remember that. You just, <laughs> I don't know if you guys are like that. I'm like that once in a while. I grab a color and I just, I know I need to switch, and uh, sometimes I don't. I'm just like, okay, but I have this one in my hand. I'm just gonna keep using it, you know. Ah, see that, that needs to be darker. That does not need to be that color. I need that to be quite a bit darker. Those wrinkles under the eye are usually so much darker than uh, than what we think. Okay. Now. Salmon, there it is. Okay, so I put a lot of dark areas um, over. I put a lot of dark pencil marks over here, and I wanted to lighten that up just a little bit. Right there, at least to smooth that out a little bit. There we go. Okay, looks like he's got a black eye over here. <laughs> Get rid of some of that dust, and I need to need to smooth that out just a little bit more. So this whole area, if we can add Venetian red, um, yeah, we've got Venetian red. If we can add that to this area, it's going to look, and it's a little bit darker right here. It's going to, I think, look a little bit better because it will. Uh, shift that tone to be a little bit darker than what it is currently. There we go. And 
have to allow for some of that ambient light that is coming back into the face over here, hitting the face on that opposite side. Okay. All right, we may leave it r just like that. Let's take a look here. I think I will, and um, and then it gives us a lot to work on tomorrow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I think we will do that. We'll leave it right there where it is at the moment. And if you have any questions right now specifically about anything that we're working on or... Uh, uh, the support, pencils, whatever. Um, I can go ahead and take those, but I think I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and stop for now, and we'll leave it just like that What we work about an hour on it. Um, and so then tomorrow, hopefully we'll be able to wrap up. We'll be able to finish, you know, uh, just this, this portion. That's what we're trying to do today. So, all right, guys, thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. And like I said, this is Shelter in Place CP um, drawing live stream. And we're going to do this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from, uh, at 5 o'clock. We'll probably end around 6, 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And we'll just be doing this while we're um, all in quarantine, while we're all, you know, uh, staying at home. And so hopefully I will see you out here tomorrow. So until then, stay sharp. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.